data reveals that most Indians do not see liberalism as a virtue. So what? This is something that I sent to Armin and you really wanted to cover. Okay. According to a recent book by data journalist uh, Rukmini Srinivasan, uh, India, despite having a secular and pluralistic constitution, is still massively majoritarian in its views. According to the data, quote, age, education, and urbanization and income do not produce the moderating progressive liberal effects on views that we see that we in our popular popular imagination in India assume that they do. Young people do not hold more progressive values than their parents or even their grandparents. In an interview with uh, Betwa Sharma of Consortium News, Rukmini explained that the data shows, quote, the intensity of anti-Muslim sentiments, propaganda, and violence. Since Narendra Modi and the Bharatiya Janata Party came to power in 2014, this intensity has increased. The data showed that the country remains steeped in casteism, where, banned pra- where the banned practice of untouchability is still followed, even by people in urban areas. Rukmini further explained that, despite women having the liberty to choose who they marry, most Indians firmly believe that women should be subservient to their husbands and should not go out for paid work. So there's actually a lot more to this that I want to get into. Before we fully dive in, I want to say that this is like a full book that this that this data journalist wrote, and I didn't get the opportunity to read the whole book, right? So I am discussing things that are like, I don't have all the actual numbers readily available. I don't have, I haven't read the text itself. So I'm, this is based off of interviews and stuff that I've read about it. Just Is it a reputable source? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I don't understand. So, is it worse than before? Like, because they are self-reporting. I don't know if that's a very good, reliable way to figure this out. So, do are Indians getting more or less? Like, I understand that they're saying liberalism is not. They're not a fan of liberalism, but is it getting worse or is it getting better or is it the same? Um. It, it depends on the, the issue at hand. So part of what they talk about is that actually a lot of polling in India is not very comprehensive. And so it doesn't capture a lot of the nuance to why people have the views that they do. And they only come around during election time where they just give a poll. It's like yes, no on one data point. And so you can't really capture dynamic information in the same way that you could with the research that we get out get out of the pew research center in america for example um but what they talk about is how there is an assumption by a lot of people that because india has such a young population and it is continuing to urbanize and it is continuing to have higher education that we we would see some of these attitudes change and the data is saying that no that's not true you could have a graduate or postgraduate education and data still shows that you are likely to think that cow slaughter should be completely criminalized or um that the rates of um like intercaste marriage basically no changes for the past three generations um okay but my understanding okay i understand that these are still a problem in india okay but how was the before and after analyzed okay because i think i have a problem with the way that the before and after was analyzed i mean not because not not the that the study what had the problem but the way people are coming up with the conclusion that things are getting worse correct me if i'm wrong they are asking people if they can if they are more for them to report themselves if they think they're less or more liberal than their grandparents or parents right no, not necessarily so this book is based off of data and polls some going back as far as the 1950s oh, but okay. through a, a variety yeah. of questions a variety of pollsters like it's it's a wealth oh, of different data points ah, and so i 
and like I said, I haven't been able to read the whole book, so I can't tell you exactly how they asked certain questions, how much of it is self-assessment of someone else's conservatism, so on and so forth. I don't know. But um, because if that was the case, I would agree. But this is across many different data points and different pollsters. Um, I think when the data shows a lack of commitment to free speech and free expression, a lack of commitment to free operation of the judiciary and opposition parties, and a fundamental uh, mistrust of human rights organizations. And the author said, these numbers are worrying for people who believe in free speech and free expression. They're also worrying because of the fact that if, if excuse me, they're also worrying because of the fact that they are comparable, if not lower for India than some deeply authoritarian countries. Um, um, okay. Blah, 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 blah. There was another point. Where's the panic? But do you have a panic button here close by, Susie? Yes, exactly. Um, one thing that was really shocking to me is when they talked about um, the caste problem. Just a second. Um, okay, here we go. Um, this is a running theme. Age, education, and levels of urbanization and income do not produce the moderating progressive liberal effects on views that we in our population in India assume that they do. From these opinion polls, young people do not hold more progressive values than their parents or even their grandparents. The levels of intercaste marriages in India are entirely unchanged over the last 70 years. The share of intercaste marriages among those in their 20s are no different from people in their 90s. It remains under 5% in India, and a large number of those are within the overall caste grouping rather than a complete caste group crossing. Young people are saying that they do not support intercaste interreligious marriage to an even greater degree than the views expressed by their grandparents. They're not saying that they have a greater commitment to free speech or secular values than older people. Um, this is something that has gone under the surface a little bit, and it is partly because in most of the world, there has been a drift towards more progressive values among younger and better educated people. Why? Um, it, that, the, the, ans the author like struggles to answer that question. There is not necessarily a clear answer why. Like I said, liberalism is not viewed as a virtue, according to this data, and people more prefer to openly identify as traditional. Can I can I guess? I'm gonna guess. Go ahead. I think I think it's because of the segregation and the hostility between Muslims and Hindus. Do you think that's a legit guess? I think it's because of the lack of mixing and the demonization and the taking guard and holding on to tradition to maintain your identity against a perceiving enemy. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, the data shows that far more Hindus than Muslims would rather not have neighbors from a different faith. But when it comes to interfaith marriages, both religious groups are against it. Okay, but what about my theory? You don't think that's legit? I mean, I I definitely see how that could be a factor that plays into this. Like, but uh, it's like speculation, right? Like, I don't know. Mm, I mean, everywhere else with more education and time, things are becoming more liberal. This is very mm -hmm. scary, by the way. We're talking about the second most populated country in the world. And the world's largest secular Electoral democracy. democracy. Yes. So, if things and are not a lot of the data liberal, is like they don't value democracy. Yeah. So this is like a major block for the world to move forward. Like if India doesn't come with us, like we're missing. Like the world is not going to move forward without India. We need India. We need yeah. India. This is like the one of the most. We already kind of have lost china for a while okay for the foreseeable future so but, that's the biggest country what do you mean of course we yes. lost them yeah. did we ever have them <laughs> i know i know like they're, they're like a lost cause 
for at least the next 50 years, maybe, I don't know, um, maybe even 100. So India was a major country that we needed to drag kicking and screaming to the 21st century's standards, but they're slipping right through our fingers. So my hope was that the next generation would be a lot better than this, who, the current craze is in charge. And you're telling me that it's not. Yeah, so, that's so like, because you often talk about like, oh, I have hope for India, blah, blah, blah. This new generation is different. They'll come in, they'll change things. I don't think that's necessarily the case at all based on the data that's available. Can we get more data on this? Like, I don't believe. I, I don't do want to read this... this full book, actually, to get a clearer picture of exactly what the breakdown is like. Hmm. Yeah, the, the author says, when it comes to marriage, it becomes a particular bridge too far. It is not much of a leap of reasoning because of the highly endogamous nature of marriage in India, which that is a whole fascinating subject on itself. Like the, yeah, how, how extremely endogamous it is. Um, all sorts of levels of mixing within groups are very low. To me, the hostility is not surprising, but the inability or unwillingness to express these views is particularly surprising. It really makes me feel that a young person in India attempting an intercaste or interfaith marriage or relationship are one of the bravest people in the country. Okay, so here's... It, or maybe this will make you feel better. So then the author is asked, are there any signs of change? And they say, in terms of talking the talk, there is some improvement. The share of people, for example, on matrimonial websites who are open to looking at prospective alliances from those outside of their caste as well. But unless we see an increase in actual marriages, I don't know if we should anticipate that the talk translates to action. These simple, are not simple personal leaps of faith. They come along with real threat of violence and ostracization. If young people decide to move even closer within their groups, you would see why they are doing that, given the hostility they encounter in society. Any, any, uh, any data regarding views on LGBT issues? Over time? Actually, they talk about that a lot. So in terms of, so th they talk about like, what would it take for something like this to shift? And they give the example of homosexuality. So here's a quote from between 1990 and, and 2014, those who opposed homosexuality fell from 89% to 24%. Yeah, huh? That's a drastic shift from an overwhelming yeah. majority to a clear minority. Between 2014 and 2019, the share of Indians who believe homosexuality should be accepted by society more than doubled, you found. What happened? And she, the author, believes that this is because of the de decriminalization that occurred um, towards homosexuality in 2018. So basically, she talks about how if there are, she thinks perhaps if there are signals by the state or by authoritative bodies towards an attitude that may help signal and usher in more people having that attitude. Like, oh, okay, well, the court came in and they thought that this should be decriminalized. Like, maybe this is okay after all. Um, that kind of a thing. Hmm. So, and they talk about, okay, well, what would that mean in terms of the extreme rise of anti-Muslim sentiments we've seen in the country? Like, what form would that take? And they weren't exactly sure how that would look in practice. But they need, she thinks that there needs to be some sort of constitutional authority that comes out with like a clear and resounding support of something and that what's different though is that there weren't open nightly television shows that were demonizing gay people at the time right but now the level of dehumanizing rhetoric towards muslims is like so normal it's become like a blood sport on tv that the effort just, in terms of changing that might become much more difficult. That that leads more like my theory makes more sense. You know, the let the kind of conservatism that we're saying um maintain its power in India are the type that you see that aligns itself against a, a foreign threat, like Islam, for example. For example, in, I don't know, in Europe 
or in the United States, when it comes to immigration, that motivates a lot of people to hold on to conservatism. Even a lot of atheists who used to be liberal became supportive of Christian values because of the threat of Islam, right? Because yeah. they're like, oh, this thing, we don't like this. So they hold on to Christian conservative values as defense mechanism. So you can see a lot of Indians who fear a takeover by Islam of India, like paranoid about that. Even the ones who, a lot of them who are interested in liberal values might think like, you know, liberal values cannot stand against Islam. Some of them who are even atheists uh, endorse traditional Hindu values because they think that's the only thing in India that could stand up against Islam. So I think like maybe some of these conservative values, some of them consciously, but a lot of it not so consciously, are a way, it's a defense mechanism. Conservatism is a defense mechanism when people are afraid of an outside threat. You know, when oh, people yeah. are I mean, afraid. There are literally studies on this. People yeah. who lean towards conservatism are more likely to have fear and disgust responses. Yeah, actually, we have literally a person that that likes like that is like that in the live chat right now. <laughs> um, look, he's saying he's saying that. Let's be honest. At the end of the day, Hinduism and Christianity are way better than Islam. See, they I defend other conservatives, but we wouldn't disagree with that statement. No, I would disagree because what they actually they are Islam is the worst. But what they mean is that they are a good defense mechanism, even though Islam yeah, okay, is. Yeah. Yeah, even though Islam is worse, is, is the worst religion, Hinduism and Christianity are not a good defense mechanism. People think like liberalism is too weak against Islam, but it's not. And Christianity and Hinduism are actually stronger forces against Islam, but they're wrong. Liberalism is the most powerful force against all of this religious mumbo jumbo. It is liberalism is a very powerful ideology. The reason why some some of these people don't get that is because. They think they associate, I don't know, wokeism or communism with liberalism. You know, they think that those are too weak or insane to be able to be able to have a chance. But those are liberalism. Yeah, liberalism is actually a very very powerful ideology, and it's not wokeism. It's not communism. It's none of that thing. And if you actually completely uh, endorse, like, accept liberalism in your country, I mean, it it. In over in less than 150 years, it has taken over most of the powerful countries in the world. It has dominated the planet. The whole world order is now controlled by liberal values. It's under liberal values. I mean, Islam as a th Islam, to, uh, the way like people are like oh, Islam took over the world. Nothing took over. No ideology has taken over the world as fast as liberalism has. And it's so dominantly as well. It is a very powerful force. If you use it against Islam, it actually will. So it, it will it will crush it. It will crush it. Much better than Christianity and Hinduism would ever. In fact, if you use Hinduism and Christianity against Islam, eventually they will join forces. Okay? They will oh, join forces. True. They will join forces over and they will join together in conservative values to crush liberalism. You will never get liberalism. If you make, if you use, if you try to grow Hinduism and Christianity to defeat Islam. Yeah. <laughs> you want to crush Islam? Use liberalism. Be a lib, okay? Be a lib. What we <laughs> yeah. have here are two flaming libs, okay? <laughs> and I refuse to apologize for it. True, true, true. Just an average liberalism enjoyer. <laughs> Oh, one more thing. Uh, Parisian word Jake is saying, all that you said will matter if liberals stop having kids and be replaced with Muslims who have 10 plus kids. We don't need to have our own kids. Okay, but we're we coming should be after having more kids. I know, I know, but we're coming but we after should, your we kids. We should actually be having more kids. Let me make my point, Susanna. Let I me make okay. my point. Okay, you know, you twice I tried to say this and twice you didn't let me finish my point. Okay, we're coming after your kids because we are. And we are very successful at that, okay? Like, Muslims, you're having more babies, but we're taking your babies. 
we're making them libs and atheists much more effectively than you're making our kids Muslims or Christians. But we I can know, still out I, I, in terms of not, birth rates. Not if we not if we pop that bu bubble. Not if we not if they can are uh, not successful in ke keeping their kids in isolation. I was talking to Voodoo Vids about this, and honestly, he swayed me. I I think I I. I see your point. I see what you mean. And also like, yes, we can still have that. I still think we should be having more kids. Yeah, but that doesn't negate what anything I'm saying. No, okay. it doesn't. Okay. I think we'd be the, more effective if we were also having more kids. Like what does yeah, it have but, to be one, but then, one tactic? I, I true, but the main game is the conversion game or the deconversion game. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could play you could play the baby making machine game. But I think like the main winner, the winning card is the who has the better ideas card. That that's the yeah. that's the yeah. Okay. We gotta We oh. need both. Yeah. Something I don't remember <laughs> is celebrate Jack is saying based woman. <laughs> 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 Part of the problem is, is that as I get older, I get more trad wifey. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second. I look in the mirror, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> oh like, I'm God. really into fatherhood. Like, <laughs> something I don't remember. Fathers is... in this world. <laughs> Something I don't remember is celebrating her six month membership by calling the two of us bullshitters. Well, thank you so much for your six month membership. I love it. Something I don't remember. I love okay. it. All right. She always confuses me. So something I don't remember always confuses oh. me some, in, in, their, in their comments. It's <laughs> oh, it's a it's a roller coaster. You're like, I think this person is trolling us, but then they also seem to be a big fan. I really can't tell what the hell. She, she goes from being a fan to be to hating us between every two comments. <laughs> Is is confusing. Uh, PK is also celebrating his six month membership with a lot of emojis that are for members um, only. Something I remember is like confusing us again by calling us maniacs while being a member. Thank we you. Something we are maniacs, actually. <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your membership. Oh, more people are celebrating their membership. Armin Let's is over get here the... being a libertine so, no, my... licentious heathen hedonistic person and i'm in the corner like we need more we need better fathers we need more marriage <laughs> oh persian wojek is saying you're my second favorite internet trad wife now after abby shapiro, shapiro. Look, i'm a really bad trad wife though i'm not that good <laughs> Congratulations. Good. Are you happy now, Susanna? Are you happy? Look what you're becoming. I Is am, though. I'm like, oh, no. I feel so happy when I'm like, oh, my partner woke up from a nap. Let me make sure he has tea. I want to cook him something. Like, I like that. I actually do. <laughs> but here's the difference. I don't think that that should just automatically be it for everyone. You know what I mean? People are asking you, what's a trad wife? Um, it's like a slang word for just a traditional model of womanhood and femininity. Yeah. And yes. I, I was honestly just using it as a joke because I'm actually not good at being a trad wife. Yeah, yeah. No, you, yeah, you spoil your partner. Um, so people are celebrating. A lot of people are celebrating their memberships. Thank you, guys. Secular Sekai oh, by so Women cool. Life Freedom. Uh, Sina is saying, "My son is a cat. Does that count?" Yep, that counts. Uh, my daughter are two puppies. No, get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.